are back in the unlit room and the curtains are drawn. Two guests are feeling their way about, looking for the light switch. A pretty little room. I wonder who is the owner. It doesn't matter. The great thing is that we have escaped Joanna. Jack, look! A man! He's asleep. Do you know him? (laughs) Not I. Uh, Excuse me, sir. Hi. Darling, how extraordinary. After all, Precious, have we any right to wake up a stranger just to tell him that we are runaways hiding in his house? I think he would expect it of us. There's no budging him. At any rate, we've done the civil thing. There have evidently been people here, but they haven't drunk their coffee. Cold as a deserted egg in a bird's nest. Jack, if you were a clever detective, you could construct those people out of their neglected coffee cups. I wonder who they are and... What has spirited them away? Perhaps they've only gone to bed. Or we to knock them up. I think not, dear. I suppose we have run away. Jack, meaning to. Irrevocably. Mabel, if, if the dog-like devotion of a lifetime... <laughs> he's not shamming, do you think? Shake him again. It's all right, Mabel. If the dog-like devotion of a lifetime... Poor little Joanna. Still, if a woman insists on being a pendulum around a man's oh, neck... Do give me a chance, Mabel, if the dog-like devotion of a lifetime... Joanna appears once again in her dinner gown. <laughs> oh, may I say, this is just a little too much. Oh, Joanna! So, sweet husband, your soul is still walking alone, is it? Oh, how can you sneak about in this way, Joanna? Have you no pride? Please address me as Mrs Purdy, madam. <laughs> this man? We don't know and there's no waking him. You can try if you like. You were saying something about the devotion of a lifetime. Please, go on. I don't like to before you, Joanna. Oh, don't mind me. I I should certainly like to say it. And I shall be proud to hear it. I should have liked to spare you this, Joanna. You wouldn't put your hands over your ears. No, sir. Fie, Joanna. Surely a wife's natural delicacy... As you take it in that spirit, Joanna, I can proceed with a clear conscience. If the dog-like devotion of a lifetime... Did he move? It it isn't that. I'm I'm feeling very funny. Did did one of you tap me just now on the forehead? I think I've been in this room before. (laughs) There's something coming rushing back to me. I seem to know that coffee set. If I do, the lid of the milk jug is chipped. It is. I... I can't remember this man's name, but I'm sure it begins with L. Lob. 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 Mabel, your dress. How on earth? My dress. You were in knickerbockers in the wood. And so I am now. <laughs> Where did I change? The wood. Let me th- let me think. The, the, the wood. The wood, certainly. But the wood wasn't the wood. Oh, my head is going round. Lob's wood. I remember it all. We were here. We did go. Uh, So we did. Uh, But how could... uh, Where was... And who was? And what was? Uh, Don't let go. Hold on to what we were doing or we shall lose grip of ourselves. Uh, um, Devotion. Something about devotion. Hold on to devotion. Uh, If the dog-like devotion of a lifetime... Which of you was I saying that to? To me. Uh, Are you sure? I'm not quite sure. Uh, Joanna, what do you think? Which of you is my wife? I am. No. I am not. It is Mabel who is your wife. Me? Why, of course you are, Mabel. I believe I am. And yet how can it be? I was running away with you. You don't need to do it now. The wood. Hold on to the wood. The wood is what explains it. Yes, I see the whole thing. Lob, you infernal old rascal. Let us try to think it out. Don't anyone speak for a moment. Uh, Think first. Uh, Love. Hold on to love. I say, I believe I am not a deeply passionate chap at all. I I believe I am just a philanderer. It is what you are. Mabel, what about ourselves? I didn't know. Just a philanderer. And if people don't change, I suppose we shall begin all over again now. I dare say but not with each other. I may philander again, but not with you. John Purdy. John Purdy, the fine fellow I used to think you. The wood has taught me one thing at any rate. What, Jack? (laughs) That it isn't accident that shapes our lives. No, it's fate. It's not fate, Joanna. Fate is something outside us. What really plays the dickens with us is something in ourselves. 
Something that makes us go on doing the same sort of fool things, however many chances we get. Something in ourselves. Something we are born with. Can't we cut out the beastly thing? It depends, I expect, on how long we have pampered him. We can at least control him if we try hard enough. But I have for the moment an abominably clear perception that the likes of me never really tries. Forgive me, Joe. No, no, Mabel, both of you. It isn't very pleasant to discover that one is a rotter. <laughs> I suppose I shall get used to it. I could forgive anybody anything tonight. It is so lovely not to be married to you, Jack. I can understand that. I do feel small. You will soon swell up again. <laughs> That's the appalling thing. But at present, at any rate, I am a rag at your feet, Joanna. No, at yours, Mabel. Are you going to pick me up? I don't advise it. I don't know whether I want to, Jack. To begin with, which of us is it your lonely soul is in search oh. of? Which of us is the fluid one, or the fluider one? Are you and I one, or are you and Joanna one? Or are the three of us two? He wants you to whisper in his ear, Mabel, the entrancing poem, Mabel Purdy. Do it, Jack. There will be nothing wrong in it now. Rub it in. When I meet Joanna's successor... Uh, no, no, Mabel, none of that. At least credit me with having my eyes open at last. There will be no more of this, I swear it by all that is... Bah! He's off again! Oh, Lord, so I am. <laughs> Don't, Joanna. No, she is quite right, I, I was. In my present state of depression, which, which won't last, I feel there is something in me that makes me go on being the same ass, however many chances I get. I haven't the stuff in me to take warning. My whole being is corroded. Shakespeare. Shakespeare knew what he was talking about. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves, that we are underlings. For dear Brutus, we are to read dear audience, I suppose? You have it. Meaning that we have the power to shape ourselves? We have the power, right enough. But isn't that rather splendid? Uh, for those who have the grit in them, yes. And they are not the dismal chappies, they are the ones with the thin, bright faces. I'm afraid there is not much fight in me, Mabel, but we shall see... If you catch me at it again, have the goodness to whisper to me in passing lobs wood. <laughs> that may cure me for the time being. Perhaps I will. As long as I care to bother, Jack. It depends on you how long that is to be. I feel that there is hope in that, as well as a warning. Perhaps the wood may prove to have been useful after all. You know, we are not people worth being sorrowful about, so let us laugh. <laughs> <laughs> we have forgotten the others. I wonder what is happening to them. Uh, yes, what about them? Have they changed? I didn't see any of them in the wood. Perhaps we did see them without knowing them. We didn't know Lob. That's true. Won't it be delicious to be here to watch them when they come back and see them waking up? Or whatever it was we did. What was it we did? I think something tapped me on the forehead. How do we know the others will come back? Oh, we don't know. Oh, how awful. Listen. I distinctly hear someone on the stairs. It will be matey. Uh, be cautious, both of you. Uh, don't tell him we've had any uh, odd experiences. However, it is Mrs. Colt who comes downstairs carrying a candle and her husband's muffler. So, you're back at last. A nice house, I must say. Where is Cody? Cody? Did he go into the wood too? I suppose so. I've been down several times to look for him. Oh, Cody too. I wonder. Oh, how dreadful. <sighs> what is dreadful, Joanna? <clears throat> Nothing. I was just wondering what he is doing. Doing? What should he be doing? Did anything odd happen to you in the wood? No, no, nothing. <laughs> we just uh, strolled about and came back. <laughs> Have you noticed Lob? Oh, yes. He's been like that all the time. A sort of stupor, I think. And sometimes the strangest grin comes over his face. Grin? Well, just as if he was seeing amusing things in his sleep. I dare say he is. Ought me to get Matey to him? Matey has gone too. <laughs> what? Well, at all events, he is not in the house. Matey! I wonder who is with him. Must somebody be with him? Oh, no, not oh. at all. I hope it is Cody. Oh, I hope not. Why, Mrs Purdy? Dear Mrs Code, whoever he is and whatever he does, I beg you not to be surprised. 
we feel that though we had no unusual experiences mm -hmm. in the wood, yeah, yeah. others may not have been so fortunate. And be cautious, you dear, what you say to them before they come to. Come to? You puzzle me. Oh, and Cody didn't have his muffler. It's matey. <laughs> Do come in. With apologies, ladies and gents. May I ask who is host? Uh, a very reasonable request. Uh, third on the left. Merely to ask, sir, if you can direct me to my hotel? The gentleman seems to be reposing. It is Lob. Uh, what is Lob, ma'am? Surely you have forgotten. Uh, anything we can do for you, sir. Uh, just give it a name. I hope you are not alone. But do say you have some lady friends with you. <laughs> My wife is with me. His wife? <laughs> you have been quick. I didn't know you were married. Why should you, madam? You talk as if you knew me. Good gracious, do you really think I don't? Uh, sit down, won't you, my dear sir? Make yourself comfy. <laughs> Thank you, but, but my wife? Yes, bring her in. <laughs> we're simply dying to make her acquaintance. <laughs> you are very good. I am much obliged. Who can she be? <laughs> who, who, who? But what an extraordinary wood. He doesn't seem to know who he is at all. Oh, don't worry about that, Cody darling. He will know soon enough. And so will the little wife. By the way, whoever she is, I hope she is fond of butlers. It's Lady Caroline! <laughs> oh, joy, joy! <laughs> and she was so sure she couldn't take the wrong turning. <coughs> May I present my wife? Lady Caroline Matey. How do you do? <laughs> Your servant, Lady Caroline. Lady Caroline Matey. You! Charmed, I'm sure. Very pleased to meet any wife of Mr Matey. <laughs> Allow me. <laughs> the Duchess of Candelabra, the ladies Helena and Matilda Manab. I'm the Lord Chancellor. I have waited oh. so long to make your acquaintance. <laughs> Charmed. <laughs> These informal meetings are so delightful, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. And your friend by the fire? I will introduce him to you when you wake up. I mean, when he wakes up. <laughs> Perhaps I ought to have said that I am James Matey. The James Matey? A name not perhaps unknown in the world of finance. Finance? Oh, so you did take that clerkship in the city. <laughs> I began as a clerk in the city, certainly. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Fancy that now. And did it save you? Save me, madam? Excuse us. We ask odd questions in this house. We only mean, did that keep you honest? Or are you still a pilferer? Husband <laughs> mine? What does she mean? Oh, no offence. I mean a pilferer on a large scale. <laughs> if you are referring to the Labrador business or the working woman's <laughs> bank... Oh, got him. <laughs> yes, those are what I meant. There was nothing proved. Mabel, Jack, here is another of us. Mm. You have gone just the same way again, my friend. <laughs> there is more in it, you see, than taking the wrong turning. You would always take the wrong turning. Tra -la -la. If you are casting any aspersions on my husband, allow me to say that a prouder wife than I does not today exist. My dear, do be careful. So long as you are uh, satisfied, dear Lady Caroline... <laughs> But I thought you shrank from all blood that was not blue. You thought? <laughs> Why should you think about me? I beg to assure you that I adore my Jim. Whatever are you doing, Jim? I, I don't understand it, Caroline, but somehow I, I feel at home with this tray in my hands. Caroline, <laughs> look at me well. Don't you remember me? I don't remember you, but but I seem to associate you with hard-boiled eggs. Yeah. You like your eggs hard-boiled. Uh, hold on to hard-boiled eggs. She used to tip you especially to see to them. Tip? Tip? Jolly word, isn't it? It seems to set me thinking. Why is my work basket in this house? You are living here, you know. Well, that is what a person feels. But when did I come? It is very odd, but one feels one ought to say, when did one go? She's coming to with a whoosh. Mr. Mr. Purdy. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Code. The governor, my, my clothes. <gasps> one is in evening dress. <laughs> you will understand clearly in a minute, Caroline. 
<laughs> you didn't t- really take that clerkship, Jim. You went into domestic service. But in the essentials, you haven't altered. I'll have my shaving water at 7.30 sharp, matey. Very good, sir. Sir? <gasps> Midsummer Eve! The wood! Yes, hold on to the wood. You are... You, you are... You are Lady Caroline Mate. Oh. Lane. <laughs> it is Matey, the butler. You seemed quite happy with him, you know, Lady Caroline. We won't tell. <laughs> Caroline Matey. Oh, and I seem to like it. Oh, how horrible. Oh, it is rather difficult to see what we should do next. Perhaps if I were to go downstairs. It would be conferring a personal favour on us all. It's all the doing of that wretch lob. Cody! Cody, why is he so happy? Dear, hold my hand. Won't he know me? Mrs. Code, I'm sorry. It didn't so much matter about the likes of us, but for your sake, I wish Cody hadn't gone out. We that have been so happily married. Uh, May I intrude? Uh, My name is Cody. The fact is, I was playing about in the wood on a whistle, and I saw your light. Playing about in the wood with a whistle? Uh, And why not, madam? Madam? Don't you know me? I don't know you, but I wish I did. Do you? Why? If I may say so, you have a very soft, lovable face. Who was with you, playing whistles in the wood? No one was with me. No lady? Certainly not. I'm a bachelor. A bachelor? Don't give way, dear. It might be much worse. A bachelor? Oh, and you are sure you never spoke to me before. Do think. Uh, Not to my knowledge. Never. Except in dreams. What did you say to her in dreams? I said, my dear, odd. The darling man. Oh, how could you say such things? I am so much older now. Older? I don't think of you as older, no. No, young, with the morning dew on your face... Coming across a lawn in a black and green dress and carrying such a pretty parasol. That was how he first met me. Oh, he used to love me in black and green, and it was a pretty parasol. Look, I am older, so it can't be the same woman. Older? Yes, I, I suppose so. But it is the same soft, lovable face. And the same kind, beaming smile the children could warm their hands at. He always liked my smile. So do we all. Ah, Emma. He hasn't forgotten my name. It is sad we didn't meet long ago. Uh, I think I have been waiting for you. I suppose we'd met too late. Uh, You couldn't look me being an old fellow, could you? Oh, oh, how lovely. He is going to propose to her again. Cody, you happy thing. He is wanting the same soft face. We mustn't be too sure, but I think that is it. What is it exactly that you want, Mr. Code? I want to have the right to hold the parasol over you. Won't you be my wife, my dear, and so give my long dream of you a happy ending? A sweet kiss, Cody. And here is a muffler for your dear neck. Oh, my muffler? Oh, I have missed it. Uh, uh, why? Why? What? Who? Uh, h- how is this? He is coming to. Lob! Uh, bless me, Cody. I, I went into that wood. And without your muffler, you that are so subject to chills... What are you feeling for in your pocket? The whistle. It's a whistle. I... Uh, oh, gone. Of, of course it is. It, it's rather a pity, but... Uh, oh, have I been saying awful things to you? You have been making her so proud. It is a compliment to our whole sex. You had a second chance, and it is her again. Oh, of course it is. Uh, But I see I was just the same nice old lazy Cody as before. 
And I had thought that if I had a second chance, I could do things. I have often said to you, Cody, that it was owing to my being cursed with a competency that I didn't write my great book. But I had no competency this time, and I haven't written a word. That needn't make you feel lonely in this house. You seem to have been quite happy as an old bachelor, dear. <sighs> I'm surprised at myself, Emma. But I fear I was. I wonder if what it means is that you don't especially need even me. I wonder if it means that you're just the sort of amiable creature that would be happy anywhere and anyhow. Oh dear. Can it be as bad as that? Certainly not. It is a romance, and I won't have it looked upon as anything else. <laughs> Thank you, Joanna. You will try not to miss that whistle, Cody. You are all I need. Yes, but I am not so sure as I used to be that it is a great compliment. Cody, behave. Mrs. Dearth, she is alone. Who would have expected that of her? She is a wild one, Jack, but I sometimes thought rather a dear. I do hope she's got off lightly. Alice appears. Once more in her den again. Pleased to see you, stranger. Oh, I was afraid such an unceremonious entry might startle you. <laughs> Not a bit. I usually enter a house by the front door. I've heard that such is the swagger way. <laughs> so stupid of me. I lost myself in the wood and... Of course you did. But never mind that. Do tell us your name. Yes, mm. yes, your name. Of course. I am the Honourable Mrs. Finch Fallow. <laughs> of course, of course. I hope Mr. Finch Fallow is very well. We don't know him personally, but may we have the pleasure of seeing him bob up presently? No, uh, I'm not sure where he is. I wonder if the dear clever police know. No, they don't. It's so awkward. I gave my sandwiches to a poor girl and her father whom I met in the wood. And now... Oh, isn't it a nuisance? I am quite hungry. Mm, uh, uh, may I? Poor soul. We are so anxious to know whether you met a, a friend of ours in the wood. A Mr. Dearth. Perhaps you know him too. Dearth? I don't know any dearth. Oh dear, what a word. He is quite a front door sort of man. Knocks and rings, you know. Oh, don't worry her. I meet so many. You see, I go out a great deal. I have visiting cards, printed ones. How very distingue. Perhaps Mr. Dearth has painted your portrait. He is an artist. Very likely. They all want to paint me. I dare say that this is the man to whom I gave my sandwiches. But I thought you said he had a daughter. Oh, such a pretty girl. I gave her half a crown. A uh, daughter? That, that can't be dearth. <laughs> Don't be too sure. Uh, was the man you speak of a rather chop-fallen, gone-to-seed sort of person? No. I thought him such a jolly, attractive man. Uh, dearth? Mm -hmm. Jolly? Attractive? Uh, oh, no. Uh, did he say anything about his wife? Oh, yes. Do try to remember if he mentioned her. No, he didn't. He was far from jolly in her time. Mm. Perhaps that was the lady's fault. Dirt's voice! He sounds quite merry! Alice, you mm. poor thing. This is going to be horrible. <laughs> I'm sorry to bounce in on you in this way, but I really have an excuse. I am a painter of sorts. I must say, Mr. Death, I'm delighted to see you looking so well, like a new man, isn't he? Well, I'm certainly very well, if you care to know. But did I tell you my name? No, but uh, we have an instinct in this house. Hmm. Well, it doesn't matter. Here is the situation. My daughter and I have just met in the wood a poor woman famishing for want of food. We were as happy as Griggs ourselves, and the sight of her address rather cut us up. Can you give me something for her? Why are you looking so startled? Ah, may I have this? I feel I can't be mistaken. It was you I met in the wood. Have you been playing some trick on me? It was for her I wanted the food. Have you come to take back the money I gave you? You gave me. 
Your dress. You, you were almost in rags when I saw you outside. I don't understand. Uh, for that matter, Dertha, I dare say you were different in the wood too. What? Where am I? I seem to know you. Do I? Yes, you do. Hold my hand and you will soon remember all about it. I am afraid, Mr. Dearth, it is harder for you than for the rest of us. I wish I could help you, but I can't. I'm a rotter. We are awfully sorry. Don't you remember? Midsummer Eve? Mid- Midsummer's Eve? This room? Yes, this room. You, it was you. You were going out to look for something. The Tree of Knowledge, wasn't it? And somebody wanted me to, to go too. Who was that? A lady. I think. And why did she ask me to do? What was I? What was I doing here? I was smoking a cigar. I laid it down over there. Who was the lady? Something about a second chance. Yes, you poor dear. You thought you could make so much of it. A lady who didn't like me. She had good reasons too. But what were they? A little old man. He did it. Uh, what did he do? I, I am... It is coming back. I am not the man I thought myself. I am not Mrs. Finch Fallow. Who am I? You were that lady. It is you. My husband. My dear, you are much better off so far as I can see than if you were Mrs. Finch Fallow. Yes, Yes, indeed. But he isn't. Al Alice! I didn't know you when I was in the wood with Margaret, and she... Margaret! Oh, my God! I wish. I wish. <laughs> Lob, you old ruffian. No, I am rather fond of him. Our lonely, friendly little host. Lob, I thank thee for that hour. Did you see that? Durst's hand is shaking again. The watery eye has come back. And yet, they are both quite nice people. We are all quite nice people. If only Alice were not so wild. I dare say there is nothing the matter with her except that she would always choose the wrong man. Good man or bad man, but the wrong man for her. Oh, we can't change. Jack says the brave ones can. Mm. The ones with the thin, bright faces. Then there is hope for you and me, Jack? I don't expect so. Hadn't we better go to bed? It must be getting late. Hold on to bed. Breakfast is quite ready. My watch has stopped. And mine. Just as well, perhaps. <laughs> there is a smell of coffee. Oh, come along, Cody. I do hope you've not been tiring your foot. I shall give it a good rest tomorrow, dear. I've given your eggs six minutes, ma'am. And so they all repair to the dining room. Except... Hmm. A strange experiment, matey. Does it ever have any permanent effect? So far as I know, not often, miss. I believe, once in a while, Mr. Durf could tell you. Sweet flowers... Gentle Philomel, drink, drink. Lob has made better. <laughs> Seek the light in the night, my artist and my gypsy. Blemishes you can forget. Love will be pretty, and your little one will smile. <laughs> Nod heads, <laughs> nod heads. You love Lob. <laughs> Lob loves you. So, good night unto you all.
You have been listening to Dear Brutus by J.M. Barry. Cast and order of appearance were Alice Dearth was played by Biss Portlock, Joanna Trout, Eleanor Bell, Mabel Purdy, Rachel Rose, Lady Caroline Laney, Yvette Walters, Mrs. Code, Kaylee King, Matey, Mark Davidson, Lob, John Ewens, Mr. Code, Rich Lake, Will Dearth, Andy Leggett, John Purdy, Rod Henderson, Margaret, Kira Price. Dear Brutus was recorded and engineered by Alaric Smith. The music was written and performed by Andy Leggett. The director was Diona Fun. This was a Round of Players production. I am Diona Fun, and this production is dedicated to my father, Derek Wood, who died on the 18th of July 2020 whilst we were rehearsing Dear Brutus. Love is made better. <laughs>